welcome back to Farming Simulator and today we're going to have a look at VCA. This is going to be the first of probably two videos on VCA and I'm probably going to separate them with one of the two videos on Enhanced Vehicle. Um, these first videos are going to focus on the GPS element of Enhanced Vehicle and VCA because I think those are probably the most popular and also they're the ones that I understand the most because they're the bits that I generally use. Um, so if you watched my which GPS video, if you didn't, link in the corner, um, I gave a quick overview of VCA and pointed out that VCA is much more than GPS. So VCA includes um, differential locks, uh, locking four wheel drive, traction control, a bunch of changes to how steering and throttle and things work. And you can have auto looking in different directions and all sorts of stuff. Not going to cover really any of that in this video. I'll do that in a separate video. We're just going to focus on the GPS element of VCA. Yes. The first thing is it's not something that you need to add to a tractor. It is available on any tractor and in fact, any vehicle. So you could use this on a car, for example. I have used it on um, trucks for carting when I'm doing uh, the, the last one I remember is sugarcane harvesting. Um, put VCA on on the carting truck with the same working width as the harvester and then you could just use GPS to do that. Um, and that is the thing that's done in the real world according to uh, some of the folks that watch the videos. So let's get started. Um, I am going to show you the menu. So to bring the menu up, it's control and C. And as I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff to do with camera rotation. Some of this is really quite cool. I have most of it switched off. Um, changes to steering, which are particularly good for keyboard, I believe. Again, I don't use them. And then we have this section here called track guidance. And this is the GPS bit. Um, I'm briefly going to show you the all wheel drive and traction control stuff. This I do use, um, generally I will have traction control on or off, and then I usually have manual all wheel drive and differentials on. I'll go into those in more detail in the next video, but this is the, um, this is the GPS section. So by default, you want, um, lane guidance every 90 degrees off a bit like guidance steering. You can have it so that when you turn the, um, the GPS track will rotate 90 degrees. I'll leave that off for now. I'll show you what it does. Um, draw marker of lane guidance. I will show you once we're using it. If inactive is kind of the default. And what that does is it brings up the lines when you're maneuvering, but they go away when you're driving normally. Quite nice. Uh, snap angle, how, what um, granularity do you want for setting your heading? With VCA, you set your track off of where you're pointing and you can use the snap angle to uh, lock that to certain degrees and i'll show you that working with an offset should be fairly self-explanatory and they can auto set invert offset is a bit like with guidance steering and offset tools and then really nice feature um reverse guidance lanes um at the moment they're both set to one and what you can do in vca is you can automatically turn 180 degrees and shift to the left or the right of your guidance lane and if you want to skip lanes you can increase that and i'll show you how that works in a moment for now we're just going to leave that all set as it is so same setup as we had for guidance steering to activate gps it is simply a case of pressing control and w you'll see there we have a course you'll see above the speedometer we've got a heading and our working width and what i did not mention is if that's not visible if you press ctrl c to bring the menu up and misc settings transmission hud on you want if you set it off that will vanish if you set it on it comes back i would leave it on it's very useful um so on that you've got your heading and you've got your working width and we can now just go and we will stay on our track. So that's it, we're set. Um, so if you steer like with GPS, it switches off and you can see the guidance lines come up. Um, when you turn around, you'll see that it shifts the course automatically. 
then you get lined up again and if you just hit control w it'll pull you on to the next lane drop your tool down and off you go so this version does not have the auto stop that guidance steering has for when you get to a headland so you do have to bear that in mind um, right that's that bit done so what if your course is not quite in the right place so as you can see here we're not quite lined up with the edge of the field so you can hold down the control key and then use the arrow keys to shift left and right to line it up and if your angle's not right you can use the control key and up and down to rotate the course so that will let you line things up as you want if you want to set a course say if you've got a strange shaped field and you don't want to be on a cardinal angle um you can see there let's get a little bit off so i'm doing a really good job of actually getting onto there we go so we want to go that way and we can't quite get a gps course so you would go in to your settings and if you change the snap angle so i quite often use it at one because that way it'll align it to wherever my tractor is pointing and then i can rotate the course and you get a much finer rotation with the finer um, setting i believe it is uh, 10 percent of what you've got it set to I believe that's the case just from looking at that so if we set it to five degrees then it should move in 0.5 degree chunks yeah um, if if you're on a like a giant map for example you might just want to set it to 90 degrees um, so that you just align with the fields that are generally on the cardinal angles if you're on a, a map with square fields any particular map with square fields so personal preference really i like to have it down at five or one for the maps that i'm playing on generally so Next one we're going to look at is the line style. So if inactive is like we have here, so it will appear as you maneuver and then as you lock the GPS on and get going, the lines will disappear. We can then change it to always active. And so the lines are always active as it would suggest. So they don't, they just don't disappear. And that's a lot like having the lines on with guidance steering. We can then go to if inactive high. So useful if you're in a field with a tall crop, um, just makes the lines taller. And we can go always active high. Again, if you're in a field with a tall crop, pretty useful. You can't move the lines up and down like you can in guidance steering, but you can get those nice tall marker lines. Um, uh, or you can have them off completely. I generally don't like that. Um, I tend to run with if inactive. I'm going to put them on always active for the next bit because you can do some nice automated stuff with GPS, with VCA, sorry. If you want to clear the course, that is Alt and W and the course is gone. And if you just want to reset it, Control and W. So nice and easy. Um, VCA will remember the course that you had on the vehicle if you save and reload. You cannot save courses like you can with guidance steering. So. The next bit I want to show you is I'm just going to actually a really nice feature of VCA, which I haven't, which I'll cover properly in in the in the full video. Um, VCA has three cruise controls. If you press four, you'll see the cruise control speed is changing. So it has sort of road speed, and then to lower speeds. I'm going to set it on six miles an hour for the next bit. Um, so we're going to we're going along. Um, let's say we're at the end of our field. So we will lift up and if you press control sorry alt and a it will shift you to the next track and turn around so you need to have enough room to do this um and that's why i'm going slowly it works better if you go slowly uh, and then we can do that and let's say we're at the end again and then if you press alt and d we can turn to the right and do the same thing so this is really nice for kind of chilled out field work um works really well if there isn't enough room for you to turn your implement you can go into the menu and you can increase these to let's say two um and now when i do it so i'll do alt and a we will skip a row we will go across to the next one 
and then if uh, again let's say we're finished and we do Alt and D we'll skip a row and we'll go across again so I really like that as a way of making field work much easier uh, and you can set that to you know some pretty high numbers I'm not sure you'd want to set them that high but if you've got a big implement two or three is quite nice or if you you know you're struggling for turning space so that's quite handy another feature you can use is control and a and d if you want to shift to the next track across but that doesn't rotate your direction so when we were here if we use alt a you will see that as we hit it the arrows change direction um each time that we press it the arrows change which is what you want so um you see it's reversed there if we're using this and we use control it just shifts our track across so if for whatever reason you've got lined up on the wrong track you could use that to shift your track if you wanted and then uh, you could use alt and s to so if i turn to switch it off you could then use alt and s to enable it on the track you had selected I do not use this method myself, so yeah, um, I tend to use, as I've shown, I'll be going along, I'll be doing my job, I'll uh, either hit Alt and Alt and A or D, or I will turn manually and use Control W to uh, get set up. Jumping in to an offset tool, so. Um, we can hit Control W and you can see it's automatically picked up the working width for us. But if I mess it up and make that in that size, you can see the, uh, the working width is completely wrong. We can hit Control Alt and W and it will auto set the working width. And then we can uh, we'll do a tiny bit of plowing. Lift up. Turn around rotate our plow and off we go As you see this bit this works just fine um if i get on track drop the plow down and there we go so it works really well um, let's now assume we do not have a rotating plow um you're going to want to go into the menu and set the up invert offset to off and then we can or if you don't want to rotate the plow i guess we can then uh, go forwards we'll spin around i should have got some more maneuverable tractor for this job i should have got the four wheel steer version and uh there we go we get nice plowing as if we have a fixed plow So uh, VCA generally handles offset tools pretty well. It was one of the reasons that I made the switch to VCA was the uh, using offset tools, particularly offset mowers. So we jump out of here. You may remember when I showed you in guidance steering, we uh, we had the issue that it couldn't calculate the working width of the offset mowers really well whereas this does it with just pressing the auto width button so literally if i go in again and do what i did for the plowing and screw it up so then go Control alt w done so works really well and there we go so yeah if you're doing offset mowers, I really recommend VCA. It works so very well. As I said, there are a ton of other features that are part of VCA, which I will go over in a future video. Some of them I don't use, so I'm learning how those work. So I think that's everything. As I said, so key differences to guidance steering are you don't have to buy it. It's available on every tractor. Um, you can't save multiple courses but it will save the last course between saving and reloading um personally i find this much easier to use it's much quicker to set up um and much better at offset tools and yeah i think that's it
So if you found, enjoyed this video and you found it useful, click the like button. Any comments, questions or suggestions, stick them below. Uh, thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members. Appreciate you guys supporting the channel and I will see you next time.